No, this is not, I mean, it is an electric bike, but it's not the electric bikes that you're used to. Uh, there's no pedals and it kind of looks like a motorcycle because it is one and it actually can be registered as a motorcycle. So this might seem a little bit strange, but I think if you are used to electric bikes and you're looking for something a little faster, this might be worth taking a look at. But I'm jumping ahead a little bit. This is really just an unboxing video, so let's rewind and see how this thing is set up how it shows up to your door. As a business since 2015, longer than most e-bike companies have existed, uh, I I haven't. With my face on it. Well, that's good. I like to hear that. Yeah. Well, cool. I like the uh, the word of mouth thing. That's when people are saying good things. I am surprised that this showed up in a box and not like some sort of crate. I don't know what this thing actually weighs, but this box is really heavy. It is really difficult for me to move. I'm hoping that either this can lift it or we may just cut the box out around it because this is a this is a beast. I'm excited about it. For comparison, this Anioki bike over here has like a 60 amp hour battery. I mean, it's it's a huge battery, huge bike, heavy. It feels like nothing compared to this. This box is like a full, like almost two feet longer. It's wider. It's like six inches taller. Just so you know, there's a camera on your desk filming everything you do. This box is so heavy. Look at this. Certificate of origin for a vehicle. Mangosteen Technology Co. Limited. I got a VIN number, 2023. Shipping weight, 221 pounds. No Interesting, it says greater than five horsepower, less than or equal to seven horsepower. We'll find out, won't we? The dyno. I know a way to find out. Yeah. Model M1 PS. Cool. So this means I can take this piece of paper and I should be able to exactly actually go to the DMV and get it registered. I guess I don't want a close up of my VIN number. It looks like that. I'm not gonna show you the VIN number. I got screwdriver, big wrenches. I watched the video on how to unbox this thing and there's a, there's a little more involved than a bicycle. A little baggie with tools. How you doing? Good. Don't mind me if I'm talking to myself back here. Just ignore me. This looks like a cover. I didn't know that it came with a cover. That's cool. That's a pretty legitimate motorcycle cover right there. Now I find this very interesting. This looks like a, I don't know if I'm getting the term right, if it's a level two. Uh, chart. This is like a standard plug. Check that out. Huh. Mirrors. We're gonna need those to be street legal. Oh, and this is a really big box. I don't know what's in it. Oh, all sorts of stuff. So we got some keys. Nice little chrome bezels. We have two different key fobs. Now, thankfully, I watched the video. These are extensions for the pegs, if I remember correctly. So depending on your height, you can get your feet out further. These are the pegs right here. They've got kind of a, a rubber texture to them. Folds back. There's a little gauge cluster. It even comes with a mount for your 
phone, which plugs into the wiring. So it's got a USB port so you can charge your phone directly from the bike's battery while you're riding. Nice little touch. I think that's everything in that box. The boxes just keep coming. It's like Christmas. Oh. We interrupt this broadcast with breaking news from Area 13. We have partnered with Shared Sweeps to give away a brand new Ford Lightning electric truck plus $25,000 in cash. If you want to enter these sweepstakes, go to area13ebikes.com. I've got a link right at the top to make it very clear which products you can buy that will automatically enter you. So every dollar you spend is one entry into the sweepstakes automatically. Our Blackbird bikes are on that list. So if you buy a Blackbird, which is $19.99, or the Blackbird Step Through, which is on sale for the cheapest price we've ever offered, $22.99, that means you get not only the bike, but you get 2,299 entries to win the truck and $25,000 in cash. If you buy one of these Fox Bat bikes, they are currently $500 off, just $2,499 for a 1,000 watt bike with a 21 amp hour battery. And then you're gonna get 2,499 entries to win, again, that Ford Lightning pickup truck plus $25,000 in cash. I think that's a pretty good deal. So check out the website, area13ebikes.com. You can see all the details for the sweepstakes there. And if you are local to Northern California, we're in Grass Valley. Come check out our new store anytime. But of course, especially on November 18th when we do our grand opening. I hope to see you there. The charger. This charger is as big as most batteries. Output 84 volts at 13 amps. That is a monster, but I'd say just right for this. You really can't appreciate from the photos how big the saddle on this thing is. It is, I mean, look at my hand on the saddle. It's, it is so big, it, it's, I'm, not, I'm losing words, it's huge. Let's get this out of my way. So I was a little worried about packaging wise. I mean, shipping something this heavy in a cardboard box, but it's packed in pretty tight. It's wrapped really well. I'll be surprised if there's any damage. I'll also be surprised if I have any chance of lifting this out on my own. That seat looks pretty nice. And these forks are massive. As soon as you open this box, it is clear that this is not an electric bicycle anymore. I mean, these are so heavy duty. They're just, it's just night and day difference. So I have no idea if this lift can lift this thing, but I'm gonna try it. Do you think this will lift it? <laughs> I was just scooting it over to there. Yeah, that's, that's good. I don't know if, it's, if the lift can handle it. I just thought it'll be interesting to see if it can lift it out of the box. This was, this was designed for bicycles, not this. It, it did get it like off the ground slightly though. So I might be able to cut the box yeah, out from around it now. Like a chopper. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous. As long as you don't care about being on YouTube, you might show up in the background or something. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I just want to figure warm people. And if you don't care, then great. If you do care. Uh, so a 16 inch motorcycle tire fits on a 20 inch bicycle rim. Yeah. And I know a 22 inch motorcycle fits on a 26 inch bicycle rim, but I don't know what motorcycle tire fits on a 22 inch rim. <laughs> but there, there probably is one. Yeah, there probably is 
But off the top of my head, I don't know what size that would be. Like DOT and... They're definitely heavier, but if you want to just like prevent flats and stuff, they're so heavy duty. That mileage wise, they'll last forever. Look at these tires. That's a pretty sweet looking front fender. Ooh, maybe, maybe if I get the battery out, then the lift will lift it. Oh my God. <laughs> How many amp hours are there? Um, I gotta double check the specs. I think it's close to three kilowatt hours. There's not a lot of street legal stuff out right. there. Sarans, Tellarias, like you gotta spend a lot of money to get something street legal. This comes with? Comes with all the paperwork. The only question is, how do we get this front wheel on? <laughs> we don't have a motorcycle stand. I, I think yeah. you got the weight off of. Yeah, so the weight's off. Yeah. They, Giant brake rotor. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even know what size that is, but that's oh, a, God. that's a legitimate motorcycle yeah, brake yeah. and tire. Yep. There's the weight of a road bike right there. The rear disc is the same diameter as the rim. <laughs> Do you see that? Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's as big as the, it might even be bigger than the wheel. And, it, and because it's a hub motor, it should have, it might have regen braking too. Mm. They call it a scooter or a motorcycle. There's no pedals. Okay, so we kind of rock it back in, and then now the rotor's gonna come from the inside. That's, I'm just so not used to that. I've never had a bike like that, or a mo even a motorcycle like yeah. that. Oh, you know what? Can you pull it back out a little bit? I gotta kind of pop the spacer in, because it sits in the wheel a little bit. Okay, so they've got this little washer, which has this groove in it. I made sure to pay attention. The groove goes towards the nut, and then this really fancy looking nut, yeah. isn't it? Like, why? I have no idea why the nut looks so fancy. That looks like the most expensive nut I've ever seen. And the same with, I noticed in, in their videos, these little guys, these bolts are like, got these fancy like swirly machined pattern on it. But you'd think like for the price, the little yeah, stuff would like that would look cheap. Yeah. But instead it's like, no, that looks really cool. <laughs> Well, maybe we'll get that tightened down and the handlebars on first. And then, yeah, I could undo the clamp, roll it off of the cardboard. You know, these bars don't rise as high as I thought they would. And I'm totally okay with that. In the pictures, I thought they were super high and looked a little ridiculous. That actually looks just very reasonable and comfortable. Doesn't look bad at all. So now I'm gonna take the really fancy clamp that goes on the stem. We should have a tool in here that matches up to this. I do. And I get these bars loosely mounted. Should be obvious, but make sure those grooves are sitting right where the clamp goes down. That's what holds it. It's coming together and looking pretty sweet. Big headlight. Let's get that plastic off of there. Get a little cap for the brake reservoirs using dot fluid. You can see the fluid in there. That is cool. Machined levers with a little adjustment knob. This is a motorcycle, so full twist throttle. I was thinking this was gonna take a little while to get together, but I feel like I'm almost done. All right, first sit. It's long. Your arms are really stretched out. I'll probably bring those bars a little closer. Well, maybe not. I don't know. It depends on where my feet are going to go. There's a couple different positions. I'll see. Considering this is one of the biggest e-bikes I've ever unboxed, it has the smallest kickstand, but it is nice. It's really stout. It just doesn't need to be long because it's so low to the ground. Dual rear shocks in the back here. There's that hub motor hiding in there with its big power cable coming out and going up front. There's the charge port. And of course the battery's inside there. I think we gotta pop that cover off so I can actually plug it in for the first time. I think it ships with that disconnected. I can get this box out of the way. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> if you have any questions, I guess feel free to ask away. And now I'm fully obsessed. I wanna get Gotcha, you got a taste for it. Look at that charger. So. Yeah. How many amps is that thing? 
13 amps at 84 volts. Yeah. So it's got a port right here okay. to plug in, yeah. but if you pull the battery like out, so you can charge the battery on or off. All right, getting the mirror screwed in. Oops, don't do that one-handed. Still good. Got a double-ended wrench that's 12 and 14 millimeters and looks like these are about 14. Guess I better sit on it to get the mirror position right. I still want to ride this thing. So now I've got the pegs and the extenders. I got to decide what position I want to put them in. So sitting on the bike, the bolts are right here. So I can put it here. So that means my foot position would be right about here where the extender is going to put the pegs out front more like that. I'm kind of thinking further out forward, but I do think it's cool that it has two different positions for the pegs right out of the box. I think it's all done and ready to go at this point. I do need to put some air in the tires. I'm gonna check that, but I got the axle tightened down. The brakes feel like they work. The bike turns on, the motor runs. I've got the holder for my phone mounted on there. It's got a little USB port so you can plug it in and it actually runs off the bike battery, which is pretty cool. Definitely love how the charger is set up. It's like an actual Vehicle charger, that's cool. Unfortunately, it is already dark outside, so I'm not gonna get any great riding footage of this thing quite yet, but that's how you put this thing together, get it out of the box. It was quicker and easier, I guess, than I thought it would be. I did end up putting the pegs in the rearward position. Later, I might try them further out front and see how that goes. So to turn this thing on, it's the key ignition right here. Nice, uh, vivid display. This is the battery level. I do kind of wish that it showed the actual voltage, but you just got the bars here. Uh, gear is not physical gears, but it's just like how fast the top speed will actually be. One, two, and three. We got miles per hour, uh, lights, all sorts of lighting stuff. So we have all the way to the right is off. Then we have a running light. Then we have headlight. And then of course with the headlight, we have a low beam and a high beam. Horn, turn signals. Let's make sure they work. They're like frosted over black. So there's the left, same style on the front. How about our brake lights? Yep. Brake lights. Uh, it does have, as I discovered, I was trying to lean the bike on the kickstand a little and throttle it up, make sure the motor worked, and it was just giving me a beep. It's a motorcycle, it's got a kickstand shut off, so it will not move if the kickstand is down. Don't make the same mistake I did. And try that, nothing will happen. And on the turn signals, I like that it has a, a push button cancel. So if you've got your signal on to the left, you can just push it in the middle and it shuts the signals off. Very rarely does a motorcycle ever have a self-canceling turn signal, but some don't even have that. You have to manually like push it back to the middle. So the middle button is uh, 
is good. That's what you see on like name brand motorcycles. So definitely in the next video, uh, I'm gonna do some riding on this. Uh, I think a range test on this battery would be a good thing to do. This is using a QS hub motor. QS motors are great for power. Anything for really high powered bicycles to electric motorcycles, even small like cars. And they do hub motors as well as mid-drive motors. I'm actually putting a QS mid-drive motor in the electric motorcycle I'm building. So interested to see what this hub motor performs like. They, they rate it at 4,000 watts, but I think it's probably gonna push out a little bit more than that. We'll see. I think braking is gonna be really good. I mean, this rear rotor is literally the same diameter as the wheel. I think that's just both awesome and a little bit hilarious. So I'll definitely be back with more on this thing. I know it's not an electric bicycle, but I do feel like this thing is really approachable as in if you have started riding e-bikes and you're ready to jump up to something with a bit more power and road legal as a motorcycle, familiarity as far as how this works, the range, the capacity, everything about this just kind of makes sense, even the price. Under $5,000, this is in the same ballpark as a lot of electric bikes. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you want to see the dyno test on this bike, the ride review, because that's gonna be coming up soon.